Um, today I want to explain about Wing Chun, uh, how Ip Man made Wing Chun popular throughout China. But first I want to explain what Wing Chun is, and second, the history of how Wing Chun got its name, and third, uh, what did Ip Man do to make Wing Chun popular. So nevertheless, what is Wing Chun? Wing Chun is Chinese boxing. And what Chinese boxing is, is Kung Fu martial arts. Uh, in the travel guide of China, underneath the, the martial arts section, it states there, that there are 300 distinct types of martial arts in the country. Some being classified because the family wants to keep it in the generation. Uh, these martial arts are ranked by difficulties in learning the techniques of the martial arts and they're ranked from one to eight. And in going back to the travel guide of China, Wing Chun is ranked number one. But what is so amazing about Wing Chun is that the, in the Wing Chun Kung Fu Association, it says Wing Chun is designed to give students a batch rate of proficiency. So meaning that in traditional arts, it takes 10 to 20 years to learn it. Uh, Wing Chun, it takes five years. Six to 12 months, you're able to defend yourself. Uh, so, who did discover Wing Chun? And it is, it was a Buddhist woman named Nick Mui. Uh, <coughs> Nick Mui was a master of Shaolin. Shaolin being part of China that many great martial artists have been bred. Uh, Nick Mui used all of her off time from the church to perfect her Kung Fu style. Uh, she told herself, hmm, I'll just keep this style to myself. But until she heard of a disturbance of a warlord and a tiny woman. Yen Wei Chun, a teenager, uh, whose father was a master of, of Kung Fu, Yen Yi in which he trained Yen Wing Chun secretly because women in China weren't not able to learn Kung Fu at all. They were supposed to stay in the homes and take care of their husbands or sons, anything that do the household. So, uh, Nick Mui told Yen Wing Chun that she was one of the masters of Shaolin Temple and using her time to synthesize a new fighting system out of the snake and crane style. So the crane, wiping out, and the, the snake style, just being quick, being quick. <laughs> so this is uh, to better suit a woman or other fighters who do not have the advantage of size and strength. She began, she began to chain Wing Chun, and by the time the warlord returned to the, to the village, Yin Wing Chun was ready. In front of the entire village, Yim Wing Chung defeated the warlord like that. Bust him up. <laughs> this love story was the awakening. awakening. <laughs> well, Yim Wing Chung was in love with the man of Luang Bak Chow. And, yeah, I messed up a little. <laughs> In any event, uh, Wing Chun was passed down to other masters, but was not popular for it was made up by a woman. Until 300 years later, Yip Man appeared, who studied Wing Chun in Hong Kong by a man named Luang Bit, son of a master who studied from the great 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 grandson of, Wing, of Yim Wing Chun. Um, at the age of 24, he moved to Fo, Fo Shan. And in Foshan, he lived, he, where he lived, he was challenged to demonstrate his fighting skills against 10 karate black belts. Um, the reason why was because Ip Man lived through the Chinese-Japanese War, seen in his biography movie, Ip Man. Ip Man was not the, one to, the type to show off his fighting skills, but when one of the Japanese soldiers shot him, shot one of his friends in a secret tournament they held, Yip Man lost it and accepted the challenge.
<coughs> After the defeat of Ten Man, news spread in Foshan of Yip Man's heroics. Uh, Yip Man later fled to Hong Kong where he trained his greatest prodigy, Bruce Lee. Uh, to conclude, Yip Man spread the fighting style all around China with the help of Bruce Lee, uh, for he did so proudly. And I just hope that when you do something that you like, you do so with pride. Thank you. So, did we say that Juan's not here? Yes. All right, so no Juan. All right, uh, Lewis, basically you ID the topic. There's no attention device whatsoever. There's a good thesis statement. That's reasonably clear. And there was a reasonable setup of what the content of the speech was. I like the definition that you had at the beginning. Um, the supporting materials in the first half are very extensive. In the second half, I don't really hear as much reference to where the information comes from. Uh, your explanation of uh, you know the origins of the teaching of the story, you know the uh, story about the nun and all that sort of stuff, got a little bit confused at one spot, and I think the chronology got a little awkward. And so, <coughs> just remember what you're talking about. I, I know you you looked at your notes and you panicked a little bit, but just go back to say. What's the story I'm telling? You know, that kind of thing. And you kind of get used to telling the story, and I think you'll be okay. So I thought the content was generally solid most of the time. And I like the transitions that you had uh, from the, especially on the number two point. I thought that was very clear. The visual materials, uh, everything's generally solid, large enough to see, uh, shown at the appropriate time. The video clip is dramatic, a little gruesome at times. and. But it also takes a while, so I mean, I know it's you, you did edit it, I could see that you did that, um, but it's going on for a long period of time, and I know that it's, for dramatic purposes, it, that's from a film, I assume, you know, so it's, and which is interesting and entertaining, you know, and I want to say fun to watch, but watching people get their faces pounded, I'm not sure how much fun that ought to be. But uh, like I said, it does take a couple of minutes and it, it feels a little bit like you've kind of left the speech and I'm taking a break now it's like uh, the getting ready for the encore we'll take a break I'll leave the stage you know <laughs> drum solo here you know that kind of thing and then I'll come back and you know, do the rest of the show and I think you need to be a little bit more engaged than that all right thank you